All right, I think that we are live because I see it, the red button and it's not a green button. So, hey, welcome everybody. We've got uh, a great uh, webinar in store for you today. We're going to be talking uh, about writing, which is one of my favorite things on the planet. Huge thanks. Look at our look at our digs. Um, this is nicer than uh, than where I usually work. So I'm really really grateful. There are M and M's, the uh, the appropriate two color uh, thing of M and M's, which is really really important. And I've got Red Bull. Uh, which is probably dangerous right now, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So today, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about uh, being remarkable. And really, this is focused around content, creating kick-ass content for search engine success. Um, before I get too far into it, uh, let me do the quick uh, introduction. This is a, a, a picture of me with a, with a lazy eye. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Sean. I am a small business super fan. You know, I talk about this uh, primarily because uh, here at here at GoDaddy, and this is the reason that I work here. It's the reason I love working here. Uh, we are very, very, very interested in helping micro businesses, small businesses, be successful. Mostly because we're all uh, fanboys, fangirls of small businesses. So today, what we're going to be talking about is something that, um, in general, uh, freaks 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 people out. Uh, we're going to be talking about writing. And I know that, listen, it's not as bad as public speaking. Uh, I know that some people fear that more than death. But writing and producing content for your website uh, can be really, really overwhelming. And I totally get it, and I totally understand why. So here's, here's the situation when it comes to uh, writing and what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, this is kind of a... You know, if we had to give this this a, a class or a number or something like that, this would be like a, a 201 class or a 201 workshop, meaning uh, we're going to talk about getting the content onto your actual website, and we talked about that last time as well uh, when we talked about SEO. Uh, we'll keep talking about it when we talk about social media and upcoming webinars. Uh, we're going to talk about that, but this really is the, the next step where you're going to be writing content or producing content that's a little bit more long form. Now, content... Tons of different types of it. Totally get it. There's videos. There's uh, you could do pictures. Uh, there's the the elusive <laughs> elusive selfie uh, that's out there. For us, we're going to be talking today mostly about writing. We're going to be talking about uh, poetry, which I'm really excited about because then I can prove to everybody that I went to school with for my creative writing major that uh, I'm still legit. I still got street credibility. So. Let's move forward and uh, talk about what it means to be remarkable. Now, I I talk about this frequently in a lot of in a lot of webinars that I do. In some cases, I just say the word legit way too many times. It means almost the same thing as being remarkable. Now, when we talk about being remarkable and we talk about creating remarkable content, we're doing it by the strict definition of the word. So, if you were to piece that word into two pieces, take it apart, uh, you would have remark and able. So able to remark. Now I stole this, and we're going to be talking about stealing anyways. I, like, I took this from a great book uh, by Seth Godin, and I totally recommend it for anybody that's watching for understanding what they can do to market their business better. And the idea is Seth Godin uh, is with his family, or I'm with my family, we're in the south of France, uh, we're, we're trolling through, it's really beautiful, it's green, it, it looks like stuff out of the sound of music, and we see cows. And the first thing we do when we see a cow, we get really excited, we roll down the window, I got you know an eight-year-old in the back seat, and he starts, well, like any eight-year-old would do, uh, he starts mooing at the cows, he's really, really excited. Well, in that situation, like the first time that we saw a cow, it was really awesome, it was really great, it was really remarkable. Because everybody said, hey, look, there's a cow, right? Like, check that out. Now, in the book, it, what, what Seth talks about in the book is that then after a little bit of time, we're all going to see cows over and over again. It's no longer remarkable. And so he talks about, like, now if we were to pull up and see a purple cow, uh, then that would be something that would be uh, remarkable. And so it's by that strict, def strict definition that we're going to be talking about being remarkable. Now, before we get dive too much into it. I know that a lot of people are like, well, who cares, right? Like, 
what does it matter if I do something that's remarkable? Well, we're going to recap. We're going to talk about what we talked about during SEO uh, 101 and go over those basic principles really quickly. So first and foremost, Google. Now what we did was we, we I'm not mocking Google. Google's, Google's awesome and we all use Google for all sorts of things, but we compared Google to the giant robot in the sky. And so basically Google's in the business of delivering really great content to everybody. So if I do a search for something on Google for pancakes, blueberry pancakes, uh, or I do a search for uh, really cool alternative instrumental music, uh, Google's in the business of trying to serve up the best results, like finding the best stuff on the internet to serve that stuff up. Now it does that by looking down on the world, giant robot, and seeing what's going on. Most importantly, uh, you need to identify on your website in some way that you are all about you know, alternative instrumental music, and you're fresh, and you're new, and you're hip to the scene, right? All that type of stuff you got to get on that page so that the robot can look down and go, all right, this looks like this is what this is about, right? This is what the music's about. That's the uh, that's one of the pieces on putting this together, on satisfying the uh, giant robot in the sky. That's the part where you define who you are, you define what it is that you do, and you use it with terms that other people would also use to find your website, right? Then you write up that content, you put it onto the page itself. This is basic, basic stuff. This is not going to be the same as what we're covering today, but this is these are the basics. So I get that that text on there so that the robot can see it. And then the third step then is to make friends. So at that point, I go out on the internet and I make friends with lots of different people. Lots of different people are coming to my website. Uh, I find other alternative musicians that are doing really cool things with banjos and harmonicas and drum circles, and I make friends with them, and they link back to my website. And so we've got like this this network that we're building, and what happens is giant robot looking down says, "Hey, looks like there's something really cool going on on this musician's website." So the next time somebody searches for the appropriate words or the appropriate key phrases, the key terms, the key words, um, once they search for that, it will pull back those results. Now, once we have that, and I'm all about the, hey, start small, and then you're going to grow, and then you're going to get bigger. Once we have that, once we have that foundation laid, and we have those you know, three, five pages of our website, the big question then is, is now what? Okay, so I'm, I'm done. I've got that stuff done. I'm I'm live. I'm I'm seeing some results, especially if somebody searched for my exact company name or my exact name. So what do I do now? Well, here's here's the next step. Now you need to create remarkable stuff. So this is going to be the stuff that when people find it, when they see what it is that you do, when they see your infographic, when they see your video, when they see your uh, really cool uh, essay about how you know pizza came about because of the fall of Rome or something, right? Like they're going to see that content, and then they're going to share that with their friends. Now you're creating the stuff that people will then take and share with other people. Okay, that's where we're at now. Now, how do you do that? That's that we're going to be talking about the actual writing of it. Um, but one of the questions that a lot of small business owners have and a lot of people just getting started have is, is this the time for me to start a blog? Uh, and the answer is probably yes. But you don't start the blog before you get your base material, right? Once you want to get that first, that first website live, you want to get comfortable with what your mission is and who you are and really understanding what your brand is, and then you're going to start that, the, the blog, right? And a blog, for anybody that's watching and they're like, no, blog, great, I don't want to do that. Listen, basically what a blog does is it's the back end that allows you to publish frequently to your website. So it's like you're publishing news articles. You could be publishing updates about your business. Uh, you could just be letting the world know what you're doing to drive your business forward. You do a play-by-play. But a blog just makes it very, very simple to do that. And you want your blog and your website to be the same thing. Now, for those of you that are like, hey, listen, there ain't no way I'm going to do a blog after listening to this guy today. The stuff I'm going to go over today doesn't mean you have to have a blog. This could be applicable to the YouTube channel that you've got up and running. This could be applicable to your social media strategy. This could be applicable to just the five pages that you built. 
Okay, this is just going to be you taking it to the next level to create something uh, that's worthwhile that, that, that people will want to uh, remark about. So with that in mind, you've got two options. Uh, the first option uh, that you have is to pay or bribe someone to write it for you. Um, I'm cheap. I'm kidding. I like I. I don't, have, I don't have time. I'd love to help you, but you pay or bribe someone that knows what they're doing to put it together, or uh, you're going to do it yourself. Now I have. We're going to be mostly talking about do it yourself. That's what this is about today. But I do have a, a recommendation. So if you're going to pay someone or or bribe someone to do the content for you for your site, like you've got a good idea, you kind of understand the direction you're going to go to make it remarkable. If you're going to pay somebody, this is this is what I recommend that you do. Um, you go with what what I call the babysitting philosophy, which is when I hire a babysitter uh, to come over to my house to watch my kids, I hire somebody that loves them enough, meaning they're going to take care of them. They're going to do the right thing. I'm going to I'm going to look for somebody that cares enough about my home and my kids to take care of them. So if you hire somebody, and this goes for them building your website, and this goes for people that will write content or produce content or do your, your social media work as well. Uh, interview them and build the type of relationship with them that they love your business. They won't love it as much as you do. And they won't love what you're doing as much as you do. But that they love it enough. Uh, and, and I think that that's, that's where you want to make sure that you just build a relationship and don't just hire somebody uh, in some pipeline to something else. Like Talk to them. Interview them. Make sure that they understand what it is that you're trying to do, that they're a piece of it, right? That they're a part of it. Okay, the second then option is to do it yourself. Okay, this does get uh, it does get freaky, and I, I totally get it. People see a blank sheet of paper and they they flip. Uh, I work with a lot of writers that see a blank sheet of paper and they flip. So uh, let me. Let me just clear this up right now. Writer's block, or the time that you look at a piece of paper and you think you had all the ideas beforehand and now you're here, writer's block is a myth. Writer's block is not real. And let, let me explain what that means. Listen, everywhere, so writers, poets, all over the place, um, they take advantage of current... Uh, themes, templates, ideas, things like that that are out there. Uh, poets are observant. Uh, writers are observant. So when you're in social media and you're looking at what other people are doing in social media that's related to your business, this is a great reason actually just to get on Twitter in the first place. And I know people are completely freaked out about getting onto Twitter. It's like a, a fire hose for them. But when you're in social media, you look at not only what they're saying, so when somebody writes a tweet, and you see it, and you're like, oh, man, that's that's funny. That's really, really funny. Then you take the tweet that they wrote, and you, you just take a good look at the construction of it. Like, how did they put it together? I'm not asking you to diagram sentences, you know, like diagramming tweets. But what you're going to do is just take a good look at it and understand, is it the theme that they're talking about? Is it because they're saying something uh, true that, uh, that that just resonates with that with that market really well? Um, or is it the particular cadence or the way that they put it together that makes it good? So there's there's a great book out there. I think it's um, Francine Prost. She wrote a book on uh, reading like a writer. And that's what poets do. That's what writers do. That's what you're going to do when figuring out exactly how to create this type of content. And here's the other thing that poets do. Uh, poets steal stuff. They steal like crazy. Now... I'm definitely not advocating, and I would never do this because I think it's just bad for your soul. You don't take anything verbatim. You don't take something um, and copy and say that it's yours. You don't steal somebody's picture and say that it's your business, right? There's there's definite issues with that. There's definite legal issues with that. I would say that there's moral sort of damage you issues about that. What I'm saying is that all of the great writers, novelists, uh, photographers, artists, actors, everybody, they observe things that work. And then they take those and they use them like a template. It's just like a Microsoft Word template. They take those things and they use them as a template to write out something. When I was in school and uh, was studying, uh, it, was, it was fiction, so the short story, I remember struggling with trying to come up with the 
uh, the, the snappy pro style, the Clark Kent pro style. Like, how am I going to come up with that, that style? And what I would do oftentimes is I would read a short story that I thought was fantastic, really, really punchy, maybe something by uh, Dennis Johnson. I would read that. And then I would take, like, the first three or four paragraphs, and I would rewrite the paragraphs, meaning I would use the same exact number of words in each sentence and the same number of sentences in each paragraph, and I would make it my own story. I would start with something completely different. If the story was about an emergency room, then I would write about lumberjacks, right? If the story was, uh, if the story was 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 about, uh, I, I don't know, like journey across America, I would do something like a journey to the moon or something even completely different than that. But what it did was it allowed me to see what worked, like what made that stuff work. And so poets steal stuff; they observe things. Now, d don't believe me, like. Listen, the patterns are all over the place, and you learned about the patterns when you were in school. Here's, a, here's an example of a pattern that's, that's all over the place. The haiku. Okay, so a haiku, very, very, very easy to understand. Um, so at least the way that we do it, there are many variations, and, and we won't go into, like, you know, beat poet haikus. But haikus in general, right? It's five syllables, and then it's seven syllables, and then it's, it's five more syllables. So I've got five, seven, five. Okay, so that's the haiku. Now, I've taken a group of people into a room before and announced to everybody in the room, hey, you're all poets. You can all do poetry. You're going to be fantastic at putting this stuff together. And then I asked them to raise their hands on who is actually a poet in the room, who's a writer. And no hands go up. Well, then I say, okay, well, let's say that we're going to write a poem, and I'm going to tell you what it's about, and it's going to be a haiku, 575. You see the heads nod, right? Oh, I remember haikus. I totally did that. I can do a haiku, and I can do a limerick, because I remember both of those. And then I say, all right, what if I pop up this picture on the screen? And this is the picture that I popped up on the screen, a picture of Star Wars on the screen. So I take that picture of Star Wars, I put it up onto the screen, and I say, all right, everybody that's in here, this is what you're going to write a haiku about. You're going to write a, a, a haiku about Star Wars. So at that point, everybody that's in the room can write a haiku. Here's, here's an example of a haiku about Star Wars um, that I got from one of the people during one of the workshops. Right? Um, Han and Luke stand proud. Uh, robots don't have feelings. What about Chewie? Now, if you're confused, right? So we got 575, five. Han and Luke stand proud. Robots don't have feelings. What about Chewie? They were feeling uh, they were feeling sad that only uh, Luke and Han got medals, and poor Chewie did not. The robots, we don't need to worry about them at all. But the point is, like, they were able then to do something they didn't think that they could do that day, and that's what we're going to be going over today when we talk about patterns. Here's a story pattern, right? The way that that we read. And, and the movies that we watch, they all follow the exact same pattern. Or even songs, right? Verse, verse, chorus, bridge, solo, chorus, rock ballad, right there in front of everybody to understand. That's the way that it works. So what you're going to do is notice these types of things and notice this type of content on the Internet. What I'm going to do right now is expose a bunch of them. I'm going to show you a bunch of the so-called haikus that are on the Internet. And so these are 10 remarkable patterns um, that I would love for you to steal. Um, in fact, I'm even giving you, I'm like, I'm, I'm giving you carte blanche to even steal some of the ideas in these because I made them up a little quickly a few months ago and I'm sure somebody can take them and do amazing things with these ideas uh, down, down the road. <laughs> All right, so the, the first one, and these are going to be the types of articles and the types of things that you can create uh, that are shareable, that people see, and they're like, oh, man, that's that's really cool. So the first one, are the uh, it's the top ten lists. Now, listen, if you are in the supermarket and you're getting ready to check out and you're looking at all of the magazines that are on the racks, the one thing that I guarantee you'll notice, especially in the case of, uh, like, Cosmo, uh, GQ, Details, and any of the health magazines, like Men's Health or Men's Ultimate Body Builder Challenge or whatever, right? Like, if you notice it in those, you'll notice that the headlines that are on the cover, many of them have numbers next to them. The top 10 list, putting a, 
a 10 before your headline and coming up with a list is, uh, is a great way to get attention and it's very, very shareable. We're all interested because we all want to see if I say, hey listen, these are the top 10 songs of 1992, then I've got a whole generation of Xers that want to take a look at that and find out if I'm you know, crazy, right? If I have no idea what it is that I'm doing. So top 10 articles, now you see, see what I did there? This is kind of meta because I'm doing a top 10 list and the first item on the top 10 list is top 10 lists. Yeah, I think it's funny. And I don't have anybody to laugh at me right now. They're all very, very <laughs> kind that are in here. Um, but so the top, the top 10 list. Uh, one of the other reasons that I put this on here as one of the number one um, ideas or concepts for putting together content is it's one of the easiest ones for people to write. Uh, putting together a top 10 list, you could do just a top three list, you could do a top five. We'll talk about the number five a little bit later as well. It's really easy to write. So if I'm in the case of, I've talked about my, my dad before who, uh, who does quilting, right? So the quilting fireman, my dad makes quilts, a uh, very unique guy. If he wanted to put together an article or a blog post, he could very easily sit down and go, all right, I'm going to do a top 10. What are the top 10 things I'm going to share? He could do one that's just top 10 uh, patterns, top 10 design patterns uh, for quilters in 2014 because he may do it again next year. Maybe he just does a monthly column where he just says, hey, listen, these are the 10 coolest things I found online or the 10 coolest types of fabric that I found online and then share it. It's very easy for him to sit down for that initial look at the blank piece of paper and just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just write it out. So top ten list, that's the first one that we have set up. The second one, uh, interviews. So conducting interviews is a really easy way to get great content for your website. This could be a video. I'm talking about just writing them up. And the, the, the second reason this is easy, I mean this is really great for your website, is when you conduct an interview, you build a relationship. And so my recommendation, conduct interviews with other people that are creating great content because they're going to love that you did the interview and then they're going to talk about the interview on their website, which is going to talk about you and your website and your business. And so it's collaborative in how you put it together. You could do the same just with a, a customer perhaps or somebody else that comes in to your place of business or somebody that you helped be successful. Like conduct those interviews with them. Now, who are you going to interview? There's, there's other ideas, other concepts on who you can interview. Uh, you've got friends, family members, uh, experts, neighbors, customers. The, the big thing with this is record it, use your phone, uh, just walk in. I, like Every smartphone, at least that I know, uh, has a recording function that's on there. If you want to be really, really cool, get an old school tape recorder that you kind of lug around like a briefcase or something, and then that would be cool. Uh, it recorded as well. Point is, record it so you have the information that you need. And then don't publish it verbatim. Don't publish every single word that they said. What you're going to do is sit down, grab the content and the quotes and the things that they wrote from there, put it into an article that's you know, 600, 800 words long, and then you have something to publish. It's an easy title as well, a conversation with so-and-so, right, when putting all this stuff together. So really, really great, really powerful way to get content onto your website. The third one, reviews. So I, I think I, I've been challenged on this before uh, with, some, with some of my friends, but I think every business, every small business, uh, every nonprofit, every freelancer, every contractor, uh, they all have opinions on what's good out there, especially related to their business. So reviews are a great way to get content as well, and it's an easy jump start. For me, right, I really care about writing, and I care about anything that helps people write because I think writing, it's, it's, it's similar to starting a small business. It's taking that idea or that, that concept, something, and getting it out into the world, and that creative act is really, really powerful for all of us. So I would write a review about uh, maybe an authoring tool that's online, a web-based authoring tool. I came across one recently that has a uh, Hemingway mode on the on the tool, which basically means that I cannot delete any of the stuff that I'm writing about. So as I write, it's like writing on an old school typewriter. Like I have to keep going. There's no stopping me. If I if I write that the sky was blue and I changed my mind, I have to say I changed my mind. The sky is blue, right? So I would write a review about that 
particular application because it's important to me and important to what, what I'm doing. If you're a restaurant, you could write a review on, uh, on, on, on other restaurants in other places besides where you're at. You could write reviews if you're a restaurant that's nearby a movie theater. Maybe you become one of the best places in town to find out what's going on with the different movies that are in that small town. Like, there's lots of different options for writing them. It's a great way to get content. So make sure that that's on your list for writing reviews. This was my idea, right? 30-second book review, Purple Cow by Seth Godin. As a tip, I put the 30-second in there, meaning that this is probably going to be less than 600 words. That's just to help me as a writer as well. And that helps you as a writer or somebody putting together content for your website. Before you start to write it, before you start to film it, before you start to draw it out, um, put some constraints on it. Just tell yourself, like, this, this only has to be 300 words, or this only has to be 30 seconds long. And when you put the constraints on that, one thing that, that, that not only does the creativity go up for something like that, uh, but the other thing that it does is it, uh, it sort of takes the, it takes the edge off. Because I know that creating stuff can be, you know, like that that nag at the back of your brain where you're like, Sean, you need to write that article. And you're like, ah, I don't want to write the article, right? Like, you kind of freak out. But if you know what the constraints are, okay, it's 300 words. It's going to be about a purple cow. And I'm going to be talking about how much I love Seth Godin. Like, it's, it's, it's a ton easier to put together. All right, let's move on to the next one. So uh, number four. Number four is to try this. This is uh, a little bit more like the, the recommendation, right? So this is going to be something that, where you're, you're telling the world, hey, listen, I discovered something really fantastic. I want you to try it. It's different slightly than the review, but you could certainly mix those two together if you wanted to. So try this. Uh, here's the example that I've got here. Uh, want to be creative, start running. So it's something that I've experienced or it's something that somebody at my place of business or in my industry has experienced. And I'm just saying, hey, listen, Try this. Like, it worked for me. I think it's going to work for you. Uh, check it out. All right, the next one, uh, five reasons. So number five, the five reasons. This one's really similar to the, to the top ten. Uh, this could be really similar even to the, the reviews or the interviews. But five reasons, I, I, I separate this out uh, because this is one that I notice quite a bit in even magazines or on the cover of magazines where some, somebody will write on there, like, five reasons why. So uh, f five reasons why quinoa is better for you than brown rice, right? Or uh, five reasons why everybody should have an egg on their burger, right? So you see, like, when you put those things together, uh, now I have, again, a very simple article to write because then all I have to do is come up with the five reasons and then just explain them briefly as to why I think that they're important. So five reasons, really, really great uh, content, really easy to write as well. Here's another example on the five reasons. You guys can totally steal this because I'm lazy and have not written it, but I'm telling you that it's in there. So if you watch Goonies, if you're a fan of Goonies, Five Reasons the Goonies is the best entrepreneurial film of all time. I'll, I'll tell you what, it has something to do with a team, and it has something to do with being scrappy. That's reason number two. Um, maybe being an underdog and maybe something to do with like getting some muscle. Um, I'm not sure. Like that's only four. I'm sure I could come up with one more related to an octopus or Cindy Lauper or professional wrestlers. But you see my point. Like then I, I now have five, maybe six, and I'm gonna cut one of them. I have five reasons why something then is important. Number six. Number six is the step by step. Uh, I'm gonna use a uh, uh, so I can't believe I'm going to use an actual story about cars because I know nothing about cars. Um, in fact, I wish I didn't have to drive a car. Like, send me somewhere where there's, like, tramvies and trains. It would be fantastic. But here's the example with cars. If I knew of a place, a local place, just a, a local mechanic, he's kind of set up shop, like, you know, go in there, and he's always got, you know, classic rock playing and, and, and movies up on the, up on the wall. If I know this place and I go in there and he sends me instructions, step-by-step -step instructions on how to change my oil. If I go in there and he says, hey, come here, I want, I want to show you something. And he shows me exactly how to work on my car. He shows me all the steps. Dude, this is a piece of case. You can totally do it. I'm going to show you how to change your oil. Um, I will still keep coming back to that guy to change my oil. 
In fact, I'll only go to that guy to change my oil because I know that he knows what he's talking about. See, I see, I, I've talked to people that are worried or they're nervous that if I give step-by-step -step instructions on how I do what I do, um, then they'll be like, oh, well, they don't need me anymore. There may be a small percentage that are like that, but even the people that take your step-by-step -step instructions and then recreate what you do, uh, they're still going to refer to you as an expert. You're, they're going to refer to you as the person that knows uh, what they're talking about and how to do these things. It's the same with that mechanic. As soon as I find the one that takes me aside and says, I'm going to show you how to fix the AC in your car. I'm going to show you how to change your tires. I'm going to show you how to change your brakes. I'll keep going back to that mechanic time and time and time again. Step-by-step -step instructions, very easy to write because all you're going to do is like try to understand who the customer is, who the person is, so that you give them the right instructions. Um, and then basically just write out the numbered steps. You'll have an intro number of steps, and then a conclusion. And the conclusion oftentimes is really just, you did it, you're all set. If you didn't do it, uh, reply to the comments below or catch me on Twitter and we'll find out exactly what I need to tweak. So here's my example, of course, I'm gonna talk about pancakes, how to make the perfect pancake. Uh, there are no excuses for making bad pan for making a bad pancake. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on going over recipes, so measure your ingredients, leave the batter a little clumpy. That's really, really important. Um, I don't understand why it's important, but the pancakes come out so much better uh, when you do that. And make sure that the the, the, uh, the pan gets nice and hot. So step-by-step -step instructions, again, template, haiku, will really, really, really help you out when you're staring at that blank page and coming up with content for your website. All right, the next one, uh, the list of links. This, I think, was actually the original reason for blogs in the first place, like a web log. It was like a place where if I was really, really interested, uh, I was really, really interested in alternative music, then I would go to somebody's site, and on that site, they constantly would be sharing stuff with me from all over the internet um, about alternative music. Like, that would be where I would discover, like, Paste Magazine, right, or Pitchfork, or where I would discover uh, explosions in the sky, like, great bands and things like that. I would discover that from a blogger that's just constantly sharing what they're finding online. This is a really, so, besides being an easy way for you just to put something together, where you just say, hey, listen, check out these latest artists that I, that I discovered last night. And you just put links to their websites and a brief description next to each artist, as to how what you thought about them, how you would classify them, what they're all about. If you put something like that together, it it's helpful in two ways. The first one is it's a haiku, right? So it's something easy for you to write up because you already know what it will look like. You already know what the form looks like. Um, the second thing is that all of those links, as they go out to other people's websites, they see that you're talking about them. So at Paste Magazine, right? We'll see, like, hey, who is this Thundercat that keeps talking about my website over here? So then they see that I'm talking about their website. They click and they see what I'm doing. If I'm creating remarkable stuff, so I'm creating something that's unique or a unique voice um, or have an interesting take on what it is that they're doing over there, um, there's a chance they may link back to me. When that happens, again, the SEO robot in the sky. So list of links are really helpful for multiple reasons. Here's the example that we have, best campfire cooking websites. Now, I actually think, if I remember, these are real websites. <laughs> so uh, artofmanliness.com, a uh, fantastic place to go to learn about cooking uh, in a campfire. I don't know why it has to be manliness. Um, I think we should probably set up an art of womanliness.com. But look at this, Martha Stewart, also plenty of great ideas for uh, for doing campfire cooking as well. So again, an intro, uh, you know, maybe a little witty sentence that you think is, is clever, and then your list of links, and then a wrap up at the end. All right, we're moving through. We're on to number eight. Um, eight are the image quotes. Now, I have not included this previously in talking about content that's really powerful. And uh, I think the only reason I'm including it now is because of one social media site that uh, gets a ton of traffic, and there's a lot of back and forth on this site, and there's a, it creates a lot of traffic to small business owners. Um, it's Pinterest. So with the advent of, of 
Pinterest, uh, the image, and not just not just the image like the photo, uh, but the the image when it comes to words has become really really powerful. So people will take a quote, they'll take a concept, an idea, something that that has to do with their their restaurant, with their small business, uh, with their freelance organization. They take that that quote and they turn it into a graphic, which makes it very, very easy to share. Um, very easy to share, not just on Pinterest, but in social media in general. Like, it looks really great in Twitter or on Facebook when I post something, if there's a huge image that posts with it. Even if that image that posts is the exact same content as the uh, the text that I wrote for the social media post. So here's a, I, here's a great example of one that, that I've, I've come across before. Um, and many of you have seen before, right? Like the here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, troublemakers, right? If I'm a creative, if I am somebody that's that's putting together a really interesting conference, or I'm putting together um, really great content for people, or I'm a movie maker, or whatever, this is a great quote. Like you, you post this type of a quote, the image quote online. When the image quote goes up, uh, this is something that people love to share. They love to share it, and when they share it. Um, the link back from the quote, as long as that goes back to your website, if you're afraid that it's going to get loose, I've seen people that put their website at the bottom of the quotes so that people will know where it originated from, and who created it, and who put it together. Uh, very powerful way, very easy way to share content. Because in this case, all you're doing, if you're like, hey, you know what, I need to write something up for my for my blog this week, um, it might be something that, that's really, really simple for you just to troll through a list of quotes or be watching a movie and see a really great quote from uh, Ghostbusters or something and then you, you post it on your on your website. All right, moving on, we're down to number nine. You can see why I put presentations in here. Um, <laughs> so selfishly, no, I'm kidding. I, listen, presentations are a really easy way to get content for your website. It doesn't take a lot. I mean, here, I'm very, very grateful. I got the Winston Churchill microphone, like the coolest microphone ever. But you don't have to have this in order to do a presentation about who you are or what your business is. It's very, very easy just to hold your, your smartphone, flip the camera around so that it's on your mug, so it's on your face, and just wander through your place of business and just show people what it is that you do. Or... If you have tips like this as well, right? We can easily take these and do ten different presentations. Where if you're a writer, a freelancer, or let's say you're just a, a, a chef that works at a restaurant and you want to show people the right way to cook a hamburger, right? Using something like this, where you just do the presentation, very similar to a step-by-step. -step, you don't have to worry about writing it out at all. You just need to worry about the filming of it and then making sure that you get that onto. Uh, an easy place to share and embed that to your website. YouTube, easiest place in the world to do something like that. All right, number 10. This is the last one here um, that I'm sure everybody will be really, really excited about, uh, the selfie. So let me let me explain why I put the selfie on here. Um, and I'm going to tell you a story in order to explain it. Uh, my son, uh, not long ago, uh, we had a little bit of a disagreement. Uh, he got in trouble, and I sent him up to his room. And when I sent him up to his room, uh, I wanted him to think about what he had done. You know, I want you to think really hard about uh, about the consequences of your actions. So my son was up there on his bed. I went up there a couple hours later, and he said to me, "Dad, you know what? I, I want to let you know that I uh, uh, that I'm listening to you." I thought that's fantastic. He's listening to me. And uh, I said that. I was like, that's great, son. You're listening to me. And then he starts laughing, and he pulls out an earbud out of one of his headphones, and he said, I'm listening to you right now. You're teaching people about SEO. I was like, oh, I'm going to destroy you. So um, this is a picture of my son who is remarkable at the selfies, as is my daughter. Um, and I don't know why it works so well. Uh, but I know from personal experience and from other people that I've met with and other small business owners that uh, any pictures of your business, any pictures of uh, what it is that you do, um, especially in social media, if you're at, you're at conferences, if you're, if you're going to the, the National Restaurant Association Conference in Chicago and you're a restaurant, any pictures that have you in them will get shared, will get liked, uh, will make the rounds on the Internet more than anything else that you take. 
I think it's because at that point you're employing all of the people that you've built face-to-face -face connections with. We just have that 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 knee-jerk reaction. We see somebody, we're like, oh, I love that guy, right? And you see what it is that they're doing. Or you say, like, oh, I love that woman. She's amazing, the stuff that she puts together. You see that and you just you want to share it, right? You see really exciting things. So even though if you're like me, I'm really uncomfortable uh, seeing myself. Uh, on camera, and I, listen, I'm not going to watch this all the way through. I might listen to part of it, uh, but I can't even look at myself. But I do know that when I take pictures of myself uh, doing things that I love and doing things that are important to me, they get shared twice as much, three times as much as something else that I do. So the selfie. So knowing then, if you know that you have to get content for your website and you need to get that content um, up and running, if you know that you have to put that together, um, taking a picture of yourself uh, in the act of whatever it is that you do. Uh, very powerful, very easy to do. You post it up on your blog, and then you comment on it. We share it through your social media networks. Uh, speaking of social media networks, that's then sort of the next step, very easy next step, that once you publish something that's what we would consider long-form content or this other type of content that's not just a tweet or a Facebook post, make sure that you share it. Uh, make sure that you then share that with uh, with people in your social media networks. I put Facebook and Twitter on here because they seem to be the most non-threatening for people that are new to this. But there's also LinkedIn, there's Pinterest, uh, there's there's and then there's even specific ones for what it is that you're creating. YouTube, SlideShare, uh, those are all great platforms to share. Just as long as you've got people that can see it when you're out there. And once you do that, then that becomes the the the, the catalyst for other people. It's like you're giving them a thumbs up and saying, hey, listen, if you thought this was cool, uh, this little essay about you know Ewoks and, uh, and, and pancakes, then please share it with your friends. Uh, please share it with other people when you put it out there into the world. That becomes the mentionable stuff. That becomes the stuff that people are able to remark about as it goes forward. And so don't put too much pressure on, you know, you're not creating or recreating, uh, you know, Moby Dick or, or the Bell Jar or something, right? But you do want to um, play with this, practice with this content, practice with the 10 concepts and the 10 ideas. Uh, they don't have to be perfect. But over time, you will discover one that gets shared. You'll be able to see really clearly, all right, if I post a top 10 list on Sunday night that has something to do with X, it, it makes the rounds, and I get a lot of traffic to my website uh, because of it. So that then uh, makes the robots happy, of course, um, Google, because it shows that there's lots of really cool stuff going on online. Now, again, the, 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 the idea of not being overwhelmed by it. Listen, when I was a, when I was a kid and I wanted to be a writer, I wanted to, to write a great uh, American novel, Every time that I would go into a large bookstore, it was completely overwhelming. Because you would go in and I would see all these amazing books that were in there, and I'd be like, well, nothing I write is ever <laughs> going to be as good as this stuff in here. right? It just makes you sick to think about it. For any of you that are watching this and you're thinking the same type of thing, right? like, oh, I'm just not as good as so-and-so, or I, like, I, I, can't, I can't do it, it's too hard. Um, let's come back to that, that, that reminder that I just mentioned, right? Start small, like pick one or two of those templates, those ideas. If you want to, listen, just do a, a haiku, right? Like just write a haiku about making pancakes if that's what you do. Uh, but start small, get good, and then, uh, and then go bigger. So I'm always about this. So even, even the idea of starting a blog, don't let this pressure you into, oh, no, I need to get a blog up and running immediately so I can do all these types of content. Listen, it will help your business. Uh, it shows the world that you're an expert about the stuff that you care about. But you don't have to do it tomorrow. You could just take some of this content, the top 10 reasons, maybe the About Me page or About My Business page on your website is a top 10 list. Like That's a, that's a great way to get started to play with that stuff. Uh, maybe even then on your page when you have testimonials that come in uh, on your page. Maybe it just fits one of those paradigms. It fits one of those templates for your page. So start small, get good at that, like practice, and then go bigger. Then, then bite off something else. Because here's what happens if you bite off something more than you can chew. And we've all experienced it as we get it. And then we're like, oh, no, there's no way I can swallow this. There's no way I can keep going with this. Uh, I don't want that to happen. This should feel like something that, that becomes a little bit more 
natural for you and you as you create that cadence and as you create that content uh, for your website. And so as we kind of wrap into closing, I did mention my dad once on quilts. This is the this is the actual quilt that my father made me when I graduated from high school. He called it my freedom quilt. Um, it's got interesting pieces to it. I've got a uh, let's see, I've got uh, that rose that's there. I think is a uh, um, it's a nice uh, rayon shirt, uh, very flowy, piratey type of thing. You'll have to forgive me. It was the early '90s. I wore that on my first date. It was amazing. Um, I've got jeans on here. I've got an anti-drug gladiator rally shirt on here. The reason I share this then is sort of to come back full circle really quickly to this idea that once I get the content online, and it's important that you do, you all have something amazing to say. You're, it's as if we're all pieces of this quilt. Like the, those of you that are watching this now, we're now connected. This is part of, we're part of a network, right, where we can help each other be successful. Those pieces of a quilt are important. And what I want everybody to remember is that, that, that sort of that unique pulling that stuff together, that's what sort of elevates us when it comes to SEO, when it comes to finding business, uh, when it comes to just being successful in general. It's those connections, like interwoven, interlocking, that make us who we are, make us very unique. Some of you are rayon shirts, and some of you are the... The, the Baja jacket in the corner, and, and some of you are the, the anti-drug gladiator rally piece, right? But we're all in this together and helping each other out. So you're a poet. You know what you're doing. You can put this stuff together. You have something unique to say. Um, and I, I, like, I totally believe that you're all capable of doing that. Now, two resources really quick. Uh, there's the garage.godaddy.com. Uh, it's uh, GoDaddy's blog slash online magazine. We talk about this stuff that we're talking about right now all the time. So if you want to go there, see articles, there's a small business section that's completely dedicated to helping us, uh, helping you be uh, successful, helping other small business owners, freelancers, entrepreneurs, startup people, like helping them be successful. And the second one also then is a training hub, GoDaddyTrainingHub.com. That's where uh, you'll be able to access uh, hangouts like this, uh, other webinars that we do uh, where we just give advice and talk through what it is that you need in order to get online, use the internet uh, to be successful and to grow your business. All right, we are at the final slide. So here's what we're going to do. How much? Um, I have no idea how much time we have left. We've got about like eight minutes. We've we got about go eight over. minutes. Yeah, All right. You can go further if you want. So we got about eight minutes, uh, and we can go over some uh, some questions. Uh, the, uh, Kelsey, who is a rock star, she's going to come over here and join me so we can go over some of the questions. Um, come on over. I like that we're like... We're flipped on screen sometimes when we look at this stuff. But uh, Kelsey's going to be here helping out with some of the questions uh, that came through. And she's kind of she's looked over some of the general themes uh, that have come through. We'll just answer as many as we uh, as we can. Um, so not many yet. So keep your questions coming. I did write a post, like a haiku about Star Wars. I would love to see that, so please put that in the comments. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. Um, first one is from Janine. She asks, she's an entrepreneur, and she gets stuck on how to position a blog on her site, like what to call it, where to put it in her navigation. Any ideas, Sean? Yeah, um, two, two ideas, and these are two different uh, concepts that people put together, and it depends on what your business is. Um, again, this is world according to, to Sean Funder, so take it with a grain of salt, but I would totally try it. Uh, the first one is that your, your blog or the news that you have or the stuff you're talking about, uh, that those articles show up on your uh, homepage. Now, I don't want those to override the, the call to action that you might have on your homepage. So if you are, like in the case of my, in the case of my dad, he makes quilts for a living. So if my dad makes quilts for a living and they're custom handmade quilts, then on his homepage, I want the contact me, right? Like order your custom quilt today. I want that to be the call to action. But some of that content is going to be MB underneath that when they go through. The second part, and this is this is a harder question to answer. In the in the I, I would say kind of the community of nerds that make up the internet. And I'm I'm putting myself in there, right? That in that community. Um we're a little bit more comfortable with the term blog. So putting blog up in your 
header, like in the menu. So if you're in that kind of world, the startup culture, you, you know, you're, 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 you're based in Silicon Valley or you're based in a major metropolitan area, a lot of people might be totally comfortable with that. But oftentimes, uh, the majority of your content might just be news about your website. It might be tips and tricks. It might be advice that you're going to give to people. And that's what you would want to call it. Instead of calling it a blog for your website, uh, you would want to say advice or free advice, right? And when they click on that, it opens up this wealth of information for your website. So what I would recommend, two, two different ones. One, make sure there's some way that you can get some of the content that you're publishing uh, onto your home page, and that could be the default place where you publish a lot of the content, as long as it doesn't overwrite your call to action. And two, you don't necessarily have to call it a blog when you put it up in your menu. You could call it free advice, tips and tricks. Um, you, it could just be news. It could be the latest going on, the latest things happening at my at my place of business. So I hope th I hope that helps. I hope that helps. What else? Do we have anything Perfect. else? Perfect. Um, well, just letting you guys know, we will share all of the links and the slide deck and everything after the presentation. I know a couple people asked that. Um, one other thing from earlier, Denver um, asked, I assume linking to and from would be reshare of an article share. I'm not, this was toward the beginning of your yeah, yeah. presentation. So, so linking to from a reshare of an article share. Um, that sounds really interesting. So I'm going <laughs> to dissect it. I think I know what you mean. So linking linking to and from. So when I, when I link to another website, uh, they're able to see that I link to them, and then oftentimes it's it's a you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Like, listen, the best success I've ever had as far as SEO with my many different websites that I've played with over the years has been when I'm developing my website. So I haven't even pushed it live yet, and I write a a post like a link, list of links post about all of these great people online that I think are totally amazing. I write that post, even though it's still not public yet, and I haven't shared it with everybody, I click on the links just to test them, to make sure they're going to the right places. Uh, those are a hit to that website. And they'll see, they're like, what in the world is this? Who's this guy, right? They'll see a unique, maybe a unique domain name that doesn't look like it's, you know, spammy. It looks like it's an actual person. And then they take a look at what I'm doing. And I lucked out. Like, I lucked out early on where I had somebody that looked at that and said, I like what this guy's doing off of two or three links over to his website from mine. So the link back and forth is really important. Now, the thing to watch for, and this might be what, what, what Denver was referring to, the thing to watch for is to make sure that they're just legitimate, meaning they're, they're with real people. They're with real websites. They're with other people that aren't trying to trick the, the Google, Yahoo, Bing robots of the world. Like, make, make real connections. Um, not only does that, that, does that help Google, and that's what they're interested in. Um, but I think that just helps. That helps all of us when we make those real connections um, to to grow our business and to to find real resources so that we can be successful. Um, what else? We have anything else? No, but no. we just got this just in. We got a haiku. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you do a Do we want to read reading? it? Right. I would, can, can we read it? Um, um, let's see. GoDaddy. EJ, you're on the spot here. You're on the spot. GoDaddy content <laughs> haiku. Um, great set, creative, helpful, fun, and inspiring. Oh, I see what they did there. He shortened the word. Uh, <laughs> thanks for being there. Absolutely, man. That's rad. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's great. I'm glad we didn't do limericks because those can go south pretty quickly. Uh, but haikus, I uh, that was great. totally different. <laughs> all right, so uh, listen, that's that's all the time that we have today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Colby. Huge thanks who's been in, in, in the background and getting this, this set up and the wonderful... Winston Churchill microphone put together, and Kelsey <laughs> for helping with uh, questions at the end. Um, again, you're going to be able to access all of these. Follow the same page. We'll put the links on there so that you can get the, uh, the slide deck, and uh, we'll continue to answer any questions that come in. Thanks so much for watching, you guys.